Hey you guys, it's Brit. Tonight we're here to talk about Jeanette Braun and Laura the Mortician going into a defamation lawsuit. This involves Caffeinated Kitty, the Do We Know Them podcast, and Rebecca Day, or Becca Day as she is known over on TikTok. This is going to be a lot to get through, but I also owe y'all a long video, so hopefully this is um, one that you know, y'all can listen to and we'll have a conversation. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys. So I'm going to state at the top of this video, the very obvious that I am not an attorney, I am not working in the legal field, I don't know laws in certain states off the back of my hand. Despite not working in the law field or legal field, I am an opinionated person. So of course, these are opinion these opinions are not going to be super complex or anything like that, but I I am going to um let you guys know that in my opinion, as somebody who has consumed a lot on the internet, as far as internet drama, internet culture, things that influencers get themselves wrapped up in, I think that this is an absolute joke. And I think that it's quite embarrassing that Jeanette and Lauren have decided to take this 10 steps too far and enter into a defamation lawsuit. Um, so I'm going to start at the top. I am going to go ahead and read the cover letter that starts out this entire, uh, document, which I will also link down below to, if y'all want to read the documents, um, you can have a go at it. That will be in my description box, but I am going to read the cover letter because the cover letter on this kind of encapsulates everything and why they think that this defamation lawsuit is deserved. This is a threat to all commentary channels and it's a really big, big deal that this is happening. Um, but either way, let's start at the top. This came out on December 17th, which was on Sunday. And it says Jeanette Braun, Braun IP Law LLC and Lauren Propson, PKA Lauren the Mortician have filed a lawsuit against Rebecca Day, PKA Becca Day, KC, PKA Caffeinated Kitty, Lily Marston, and Jessica Vasquez, Jesse Smiles. Do We Know Them podcast for the defamation and false narratives they have disseminated across multiple social media platforms. Attorney Braun and Ms. Propson have moved this matter from social media court to a court of law. I realize that the court of public opinion can be a lot on social media, but what I've said from the very beginning of my channel is if you're not doing stupid stuff, then you won't have the internet talking about you and dissecting your content and calling you out and giving you criticism. And these influencers bring things upon themselves. And no, I'm not talking about being doxxed or harassed or anything along those lines because I do not agree with that. But as far as people reacting to your content and giving you criticism and not liking you or you know, sometimes even like making fun of things that I wouldn't personally make fun of. Um, it, it's just, that is internet culture. If that is going to set you off to the point where you spiral to the point where Lauren the Mortician went uh, alongside her attorney, then maybe the internet is not for you. And personally, I don't see how Lauren can come back from this because there have just been so many uh, calculated, it's like calculated missteps. So you're, you're doing these things intentionally. This is not somebody who made a bad decision and it kind of snowballed and turned into something that it shouldn't have. This is somebody who was orchestrating everything that unfolded and doing everything from weaponizing law enforcement to um, being dishonest along the way to um, you know just making a complete mess all because somebody did not like her. They are taking a stand against the outrageous and extreme harm the defendants have encouraged others to bring against them. Attorney Braun and Ms. Propson hope the suit helps other content creators to be able to stand up against such repugnant content conduct in the future. 
defamation is lies. And I've talked about that before, but if you want to prove defamation in a court of law, you have to prove that the content that was made is based on lies and conspiracies and has no factual evidence to back it up. I realize that a lot of the opinions that somebody might have about you, you disagree with, you don't like, and you think is extremely unfair. Um, but using things like copyright strikes and law enforcement is not the way to handle these situations. I, I cannot believe, like, why would you even waste money on trying to take this to court? That is wild to me when y'all made the mess. And as far as saying that these creators were encouraging others to bring extreme harm, I personally, and correct me if I'm wrong down below, as always, I did not hear any of these creators telling their followers to go do anything to Lauren or Jeanette. It was simply people consuming the content and maybe they went and left Lauren a comment to say, this is absolutely ridiculous. What in the world are you thinking? I can see that happening, but that is not um, that's not mobilizing your fans or anything along those lines. In order to encourage something, you have to state it. You have to make a request, even if it's something that is not directly requested. Like there has to be something that is there in form of a request to be able to say that they're encouraging it. Okay, but where? It continues and says, in a statement, attorney Braun said, in my professional journey, I've encountered numerous content creators damaged by the very issues addressed in the complaint. Operating in the social media space is a challenging terrain. This question needs to be answered. Why does the public turn to destruction and harm when exposed to a one-sided narrative laden with falsehoods? But if, if somebody is taking Lauren's content and saying this, this, and this, and this is what I think of her content, then how is that even valid? Like, how, how do we even get to this point? If using Lauren's content and or the things that she is involved in, in comment sections or likes other content that she might like, if, if that is such a problem saying this is a Lauren the Mortician video and I can't stand her and this is why, if that is a problem and that is, you know, what a falsehood and a hate campaign, it just makes no logical sense to me because Lauren is also somebody who built her platform by calling out other people who were living life in a dangerous way. She was a mortician, so she's going to say, hey, this is your video and this could literally kill you or your child and this is what I think about it then do those people have the right to sue Lauren? Do you see what I mean? It's, it's so much hypocrisy and just misusing systems that are there to protect people. Some creators intentionally post content to incite a collective anger that they know will manifest into an angry mob who become destructive without ever knowing the facts. The trend of people forming angry mobs without fact-checking underscores serious issues in online human interactions. The contrast between civility in online and face-to-face -face interactions is striking. While, while personal feelings are inevitable, this matter extends beyond Miss Propson and me. This case highlights the sharp difference between the decorum-bound behavior of a jury and the unlawful actions of the defendant's followers. The magnitude of destruction and harm the defendants incited is astonishing. This is where she gets into more specifics. Ms. Propson added, the public often underestimates the impact of their actions on our lives, assuming all content creators live in a reality TV show. In reality, we are ordinary people with real lives and we endure significant harm due to others' actions. Lauren, what about you sending the police to Kitty's house? What about that? That is actually putting somebody in direct real life danger. We're not talking about somebody just saying they don't like you on the internet. If people not liking you on the internet is going to send you here, get the fuck off the internet. While snarky comments par for the course, this lawsuit isn't about that. 
It addresses when people cross the line from snark to unlawful actions. Okay, like what you did to Kitty? Self-awareness much? She continued and said, what's unfolded is in a reality TV version of the movie Mean Girls. It involves threats to my children's lives despite me not showcasing them on my social media. Unfortunately, I am not alone in facing such threats. Other creators have experienced similar situations. And y'all already know, I don't need to repeat it again. I am not here for people going after someone's children or releasing children's names or their schools or their you know, personal information. I am not here for that at all, but we've also come all this way and we have not seen one shred of evidence from Lauren. And we've heard the 911 calls that were released when they called the wellness checks on Kitty. But we constantly hear from Lauren all of these egregious things and I haven't seen a single piece of evidence, but I have seen evidence from the other side that shows that Lauren and Jeanette weaponized law enforcement by sending them to Kitty's private home. Remember the whole blackmail thing and they couldn't say what the blackmail was about? What was the extortion about? Unjust labeling, such as being called racist or turf without evidence, has become a weapon in disagreements. Once labeled proving innocence in social media court becomes nearly impossible. Disagreement shouldn't lead to such damaging labels or threats against children. And while I agree, Kitty made her opinion based off of Lauren's own content. She presented that and we ended up here. And don't ever forget, all of this started because of Jamie Grayson where Lauren literally wanted to paint him as some kind of creep, like some sort of pedophile, because he reviews baby products for a living. And she wants to sit here and say, oh, you know, I'm being called, I'm being called a terror. She continued and said, I have suffered great financial and emotional harm because of the defendant's activities. When did we decide that creating an environment where baseless accusations that have lasting consequences is okay. And that could also apply to everything that Lauren has done herself, starting with Jamie Grayson. Disgusting. The real harm from false accusations is exemplified by the tragic case of the Inquisitor, who took his life during a TikTok live stream after being falsely accused by social media court of committing a crime. This lawsuit aims to be a catalyst for changed emphasizing the urgent need to address these issues and protect individuals from baseless claims. Again, all of that could easily apply to Lauren. The defendants have tarnished Braun and Propson's brands and reputations by casting aspersions about them. The defendants have disseminated false and hostile statements with the purpose of disparaging and tarnishing the reputation of attorney Braun and Ms. Propson. The defendants' actions have caused Ms. Braun and Ms. Propson to suffer financially and Ms. Propson to suffer emotionally. Um, I'm sure that this has been extremely difficult. Here's how this should have gone. Lord, the mortician should have never tried to paint Jimmy Grayson with the brush that she tried to paint him. And if she was going to be so ruthless as to do that, it should have been immediately retracted in a formal apology issued to Jamie. But instead of that happening, she hopped on to Bunny XO's podcast and repeated the same narrative and continued to paint him with that disgusting brush that is so dangerous that I've covered in prior videos. Specifically, the lawsuit claims that on October 24th, a video was posted by Caffeinated Kitty on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook where she accused Miss Propson of being a turf and phobic. In November 2023, Caffeinated Kitty started pushing the narrative that attorney Braun and her law, for, law firm filed false copyright infringement strikes and filed copyright claims in bad faith across various social media platforms. In November of 2023, Rebecca Day, working with Caffeinated Kitty, published on TikTok claiming Braun filed false copyright strikes and is a rogue attorney. If somebody's opinion 
is that it's not a correct copyright strike because of fair use laws. That's their opinion. And based on everything that I saw, I never saw Becca and Kitty per se working together. Did I see Becca tag Kitty and mention her in videos? Yeah, I did, but I also did that. And I'm not working with Kitty. I'm just somebody who's gonna let you guys know, like, where is this information coming from? Who's involved? What are we talking about? It was from like a informational standpoint. I love this constant kind of thing that people do where you can mention a creator in passing a couple times and they automatically think that you're friends with that person. And it could just be like a, hey, this is another creator and this is what's going on and this is my random opinion about XYZ. And you mention them, especially if you mention them more than once or twice, then it's like, oh, y'all are friends and conspiring behind the scenes. It's so stupid. It also says that in November 2023, the Do We Know Them podcast began working with Rebecca Day and Caffeinated Kitty and posted several videos that were also disseminated across 18 different podcast platforms. They spread false narrative. They spread the false narrative that reputable content creators hire Braun to take down videos. There's a two missing there. Braun take down videos that fairly use the creator's copyright and call Braun unethical, among other things. The actions above are only a few examples included in the lawsuit as a result of these and similar actions committed by the defendants, Attorney Braun and Ms. Propson have suffered damages to their reputations and business relationships. The lawsuit filed intends in part to clear the names and reputations of Attorney Braun and Ms. Propson and to put an end to the false narratives being spread by the defendants. So they really start to focus on the video that Kitty made in the rest of these documents. They go over again how Kitty was calling Lauren a turf and phobic. They have screenshots of her video here and explaining the reasoning for her accusations. Defendant KC stated that she was not accusing Ms. Propson of being transphobic because Ms. Propson has a larger fan base and following, but because people were confusing Ms. Propson's Lauren the Mortician persona with defendant's KC's caffeinated kitty persona. Along with the video, defendant KC announced that she compiled a list of links and uh, to posts that Ms. Propson liked that contained transphobic and hateful rhetoric. None of the videos that were linked contained transphobic and hateful rhetoric. Upon information and belief, defendant KC's motive and intent behind these posts were to tarnish and damage Ms. Propson's reputation. I remember some of those posts and Everyone's going to walk away from watching a video with a little bit of a different opinion. But when I saw that video from Kitty and I saw the content that was being highlighted, I could understand why she came to that conclusion. And those were all posts that Lauren was actively engaging with, supporting, leaving a like, leaving a comment. And I always say, like, you know, once you're a public figure and you have millions of people that follow you, what you like and what you follow on social media matters, specifically what you are engaging with. If you are leaving comments on a creator's page agreeing with them and they are a uh, dangerous homophobic idiot, then people are going to catch on to that and eventually they're going to say, hey, why are you leaving nicey nice comments for somebody who posts such hateful content? and that is their right to do so. It also claims that Lauren lost numerous followers and her contract with a famous popular documentary channel and a podcast deal was in negotiations. So supposedly she lost business. Again, I don't see any proof of that. I don't know. Lauren could just allegedly be saying, hey, you know, I was supposed to go on investigation discovery and now that's not going to happen. Like that could literally, like, I don't see a piece of evidence in front of me to say, okay, well, she actually did sign a contract. So at least that ties out. Um, but as far as her losing followers, people on social media lose followers all the time. 
if you build up a platform and you are proven to be hand, uh, homophobic, homophobic, inappropriate with minors, creepy, or maybe someone just decides that they don't like you one day. There are so many reasons why people decide to leave a channel and it could have been a commentary video that was made about you, but okay. I mean, again, it goes back to square one. If you don't want to be called out for being any of these things, then don't show that you are any of those things. There is no reason why this needed to go as far as it did. And this entire time we're sitting here pointing the finger at Kitty, Becca, and Lily and Jesse. And we're not mentioning the fact that Lauren started all of this with Jamie Grayson and both of these women literally weaponized law enforcement against somebody who simply had opinions that Lauren did not like. She felt like they were bad for business. She was unhappy, whatever you want to say. Here we can get into the wellness checks. This is on page eight of 40. It says the plaintiffs were concerned about defendants, uh, defendant Casey's mental health and safety, which prompted them to call a wellness check to defendant Casey's local non-emergency hotline. I've covered both of those 911 calls. They are absolutely atrocious. They go to prove that okay, we want to call a wellness check because we know that this is not within her normal behavior and we're so concerned for her, but she's just a little Reddit troll who is extorting and uh, trying to blackmail, but I'm not going to tell you what she's trying to extort or what kind of blackmail she's participating in, but I want you to send the police to her home. Both of them did it. It wasn't just one of them. Both of them I cannot believe they did that. I still cannot believe that they did that. Defendant Casey used her social media accounts to express her anger and resentment of plaintiff Jeanette Braun and her law firm. And on November 13th, counsel for defendant Casey contacted attorney Braun to engage in a discussion about copyright infringement report and were in settlement dis uh, discussions. On November 21st, while settlement, settlement discussions were still ongoing, she posted a video accusing Ms. Propson of using attorney Braun to file bad faith copyright claims with social media platforms. And we've, we've all had that same opinion. If you are completely ignoring what fair use is and you are striking somebody's channel because you feel like their opinion is a threat to you, then you are not properly using the copyright strike system and that is not okay. All creators agree on that. You do not misuse the YouTube copyright strike system, period. They also go over the fact that, um, you know, Kitty is monetized and it, it's funny because it always like comes back to the money like which just kind of makes me laugh okay kitty's monetized so is lauren and lauren was if they're being reckless and sending literally the worst messages out about jamie grayson and again that is what started all of this it's just so frustrating to continue to run into the same walls with lauren and jeanette and the last part of Kitty's situation, they or the situation with Kitty that is covered is on page 10 and it's showing her GoFundMe. They're upset that she has uh, this GoFundMe going. You know what? I, I couldn't care less, okay? If Kitty's supporters are seeing this the way I'm seeing this and they are in a position where they want to send her some money because she is literally having to fight with these two, that's their right to do so. And that is her right to make money off of her social media page. People decided that they consumed all of the content and most people that I've come across and that I've interacted with or talked to about this, we are all on the same page and that is not the page that Jeanette and Lauren are on. 
Now they move on to Becca and it goes over kind of her background and the situation that she got into with Diplo. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but it says upon information and belief, defendant Day did not conduct any investigation that involved fact checking or reaching out to knowledgeable parties to verify information in her posts. We are commentary channels, okay? If I cover what's going on with Colleen Ballinger, I'm gonna react to her content. I don't need to reach out to her for a comment. I don't need to reach out to her husband for a, con a comment. I'm going to respond to exactly what's in front of me because that keeps me as unbiased as possible when I am not having personal connections with these people that I want to cover from a fair stance. That is what most commentary channels do. They do not build connections and sit in DMs with the people that they're covering. And that's just the way that it goes. That is how, that's one of the good reasons that you can kind of sit in the middle is to not have these parasocial connections to your topics. I want to touch on just a quick second, the part where they're claiming a harassment campaign against former clients. I haven't really talked about this girl, um, Caitlin Dempsey, her, she's known as Demps on TikTok because I don't know everything about what's happened with her. But it says here, upon information and belief, defendant Day is using the above false statements to incite an angry mob and harassment against uh, a harassment campaign against attorney Braun's past clients that are social media influencers. Defendant Day's harassment campaign had has has had detrimental effects on attorney Braun's former clients and caused emotional distress and harm. In particular, defendant Day has focused her criticism of attorney Braun for her past representation of her client, Kath, uh, Caitlin Dempsey, PKA Demps. Upon information and belief, defendant Day communicated with a known stalker and harasser of Miss Dempsey named Erica Fisk. Miss Dempsey had an active order of protection against Miss Fisk to stop her from stalking and harassing Miss Dempsey and her young child. Miss Dempsey's child is protected by the order of protection. So here's the thing. I don't necessarily uh, believe that Becca would have gone into a situation knowing that this is a stalker and let me talk with a stalker. I have a hard time believing that because based on all of the time I've been watching Becca, she does not seem like the type of person to say, oh, you're a stalker. Let's have a conversation. Oh, you are a harasser. Let's go and, you know, have a have a WebEx meeting to talk about Janet Braun. So I'm not sure. To me, I feel like this is being inserted as a way to um, kind of make a point and grab people's attention. That is just my opinion. I'm not saying that is what's, what, what actually happened, but I find it very hard to believe that um, Becca would go out of her way. I think that she is like a lot of other commentary channels and if somebody approaches her with information, she will respond. And I think that's what most YouTube creators do, especially in the commentary and drama space. You know, if you receive an email or a message from somebody and they have this piece of information or they want to share something with you, you acknowledge that when they reach out. That's just what people do. That doesn't mean that there is some, you know, big plan going on behind the scenes or anything along those lines. Uh, it is simply two people having a conversation about a topic that one person is covering publicly on their social media. Then they focus on this post that Becca made, just got confirmation from the Illinois Attorney Registration and Discipl Disciplinary Commission that they have received multiple credible complaints about Jeanette Braun and they have assigned multiple attorneys to investigating this matter. I have an attorney representing me locally and, and in Illinois now to ensure this woman has stopped enough is enough. I remember when Becca posted that and Jeanette's, um, complaint about that. Uh, she's saying that the ARDC operates under the authority of the Illinois Supreme Court, which has sole authority to regulate the admission and discipline of lawyers in Illinois ARDC. All attorney investigations are confidential until the commission brings a complaint against an attorney. 
Um, but in that post that Becca put up, she was just saying that she received a confirmation. She wasn't sharing any crazy information or anything along those lines. So saying that you have a confirmation to me is not um, trying to say that you have information that isn't going to be released or shouldn't have been released until the invest investigation is uh, completed. I'm not really sure that's kind of weird, but that part also definitely ruffled Jeanette's feathers. Last, let's talk about Do We Know Them podcast, Lily and Jesse. So this part of it is basically Jeanette and Lauren being upset at some of the most petty things. So they didn't like, or uh, Jeanette didn't like that she was being called Janet. I've called her Janet too, don't really care. It says here that Lily and Jesse identified attorney Brom by her full name and expressly noted that they intentionally mispronounced her name because it was fun, but that they were still referring to attorney Braun. I mean, seems like you have bigger fish to fry, but let's move on. She was also upset that um, her practices were called unethical by Do We Know Them? But again, like being called unethical is an opinion to me. And I understand that that word comes with weight, like words have meaning, words have value and all of that. Um, but at the same time, like if you're filing false strikes and that's what the pieces of information in front of somebody are showing and they have that opinion based on the things that they saw, then I'm not really sure, like, what direction do you go with that? So the collective false statements that they're really focusing on are Miss Propson is transphobic, Attorney Braun is unethical, Attorney Braun files false copyright claims, Attorney Braun is a rogue attorney, which to have, like, your top four and the fact that you're being called rogue is in there, I found to be kind of comical. As a direct result of the negative attention from the defendant's false statements, attorney Braun lost a potential client due to fear of being harassed for using attorney Braun's legal services. I wonder if that is a TikTok influencer or somebody who is well known, or if it's, you know, somebody who's not in the public eye. I have a feeling that it's probably someone who has a social media page. Um, here's the thing though, like you don't need to go around like telling people who your attorney is and as long as you're not making mess on the internet and being an actual menace to everybody that you even cross paths with then nobody needs to know who your attorney or your legal team is right you know i i go back to the very beginning and i think like if if lauren would have stopped this before it even started we would not be here today so it goes over all the different counts. You know, I'm not gonna read that because that is just kind of boring. But what I wanna say to close out this video is I am so sorry that Lily, Jesse, Kitty, Becca, Jamie, and anyone else who had such a awful interact interaction with Jeanette or Lauren or a combination of both you know, this sucks. And as I've said before, it doesn't have to be directly involving me for it to really bother me. This sucks, you know, going into Christmas and you're being unfairly targeted by Lauren and her attorney. The issue that people had with Jeanette from the very beginning was the fact that based on everything that was publicly available, the opinion that everyone came up with based on the things that they were consuming was that Jeanette and Lauren were using copyright strikes as a way to silence critics. They did it to Cody ages ago. That was not something that happened recently, but it continues to happen and you don't file strikes or claims against people just because you don't like their opinion. They're saying things that you don't want them to say. Copyright strikes are there for a specific purpose. 
And as I've said, like nobody should be harassed or anything like that. But for Laura and Jeanette to try to paint this victim narrative as if they have been so badly mistreated while simultaneously weaponizing wellness checks and Lauren kicking this whole thing off by trying to paint Jimmy Grayson as some kind of deranged weirdo creep who is obsessed with children because he reviews baby products is one of the most insane things that I have seen on the internet in a long time. It's the hypocrisy for me. It's the lack of, it's the lack of being truthful because as I've said, you know, if you're going to say someone's trying to extort you, then you should immediately be able to tell a 911 operator, what are they extorting you for? You should be able to answer that. And on top of that, that doesn't involve a fucking wellness check. Listening to all of this and taking this content in has really just reminded me of how unfair and deranged the internet can be sometimes. And as I said, I want to have and hold this conversation because I am a creator and it matters to all of us because commentary channels and drama channels are not all bad. Everybody should be able to play by the rules. Listen, don't lie. Don't be sketchy. Don't weaponize law enforcement. Don't be, you know, extremely toxic and problematic. And we should all be able to just exist with one another. We really should. Um, and like I said, if people not liking you is going to send you to the point where we end up seeing these kind of documents, I think it's time to sign off. So that's how I feel. And speaking of signing off, I'm going to wrap this up now and I might do a part two. We'll see how this one goes, but that's going to be it for tonight. So if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.